I've been using a 12th gen Core i9 um, CPU uh, this year, but compared to the heat and the power requirements and the performance, not that happy. So when I saw the 13th gen Core i7 come out and with a little bit better performance than the Core i9, I decided to get that. And for that, I got the Z690 motherboard from ASRock. It's the Riptide, PG Riptide uh, with the DDR5 memory because that's what I have. And there are no Z790 motherboards that are micro ATX with the DDR5 memory available currently. This motherboard has one PCI Express 5 slot and uh, also has the BIOS flashback option um, because I believe it requires the latest BIOS to support the 13th gen CPU. Here's a look inside. M2 standoffs and screws. SATA cables, I'm alternating those. Ah, oh, a keycap. Looks like a double shot keycap. Manual. IO plate. And the motherboard itself. I typically don't use SROC motherboard. But in this case, um, I had very little option. <laughs> so, motherboard actually looks good. Um, just judging by the look. This is the BIOS flashback button. And I believe the USB ports next to this, any one of them can be used. This the, it needs to be uh, renamed to creative.rom and put in a FAT32 formatted USB drive for this to work. We don't need a CPU or memory installed, just the ATX power connectors from a power supply. So I've got the ATX power connected USB drive with the BIOS here. Let me turn on the power supply and part their instructions. I need to press the BIOS flash button for about three seconds. And this LED is blinking. Once it stops blinking, that will indicate the flash has been successful. If it turns solid green, it didn't work. Uh, looks like it is solid green, so that means it didn't work. Okay, let me see what went wrong. Looks like I was using the wrong USB port. When I looked at the IO plate, um, these are color-coded, so... This port, this USB port for this motherboard to use the flashback feature. It is blinking a bit rapidly now. Um, so hopefully it'll work. So it took about two minutes as expected and uh, the LED stopped blinking. So I'm assuming the BIOS update is complete. I'm going to install the CPU and cooler, of course, memory and all that, and run some benchmarks. So I ran the same set of benchmarks from Passmark and uh, looks like uh, the benchmark results are actually a little bit higher 
compared to the average on their website. And the good thing about Windows 11 is I didn't actually have to reinstall Windows. I just moved the SSD from the Core i9 machine with a different motherboard to this one and Windows 11 booted right up and all I had to do is uh, reset my pin. Now, I'm using the same cooler, the Noctua D15, uh, as, you know, my i9 PC. I'm not using currently the bending correction frame from Thermal Wright or Thermal Grizzly on the i7. And the thermals are actually kind of worse um, on the high end uh, compared to the i9, uh, 12th gen actually. It reached uh, 97 degrees. There were no thermal tr throttling, uh, but uh, as far as power consumption goes, the peak power is actually quite similar to uh, the Core i9 12th gen. I believe that one was 285 watts. That's what it reached. Uh, the Core i7 13th gen reached 253 watts max. Idle power consumption. Uh, this one is actually quite a bit lower and that's why I'm making the switch. All in all, um, it's a decent processor for what it is. Uh, but uh, the thermals could be better.